Year 9, Mr. Tapley here to walk you through our next lesson of Year 9 Humanities in Term 2 of Week 7. Uh, we're looking at living standards today, that's our topic, and we're developing our understanding of living standards and how we measure uh, quality of life around the world. So the main things we're trying to get out of this lesson, our success criteria, is to differentiate between uh, material and non-material living standards. And then we're trying to define uh, these two key terms here uh, to define GDP, which is Gross Domestic Product, and then HDI, which is Human Development Index. So, connecting economics to our lives. Uh, the health and happiness of everyone is connected to a strong economy that allows us to meet our needs and wants and to improve our lives. Some of you might be thinking, well, why are we looking at living standards? when we were talking about economics before. We were talking about the circular flow model and goods and services and yada yada yada. Well, it's because our living standards, our health and happiness, are very much connected to economics and having a strong economy. For example, uh, consumers purchase goods and services designed to meet their needs and wants. So consumers improve their health and happiness uh, through economics. And if we don't have a strong economy, they won't be able to do that. Uh, producers are able to earn an income and business profits by creating goods and services to sell consu uh, to consumers. And again, if they don't have a strong economy, they can't do that. They won't be able to improve health and happiness. They will have poor living standards. And then the government, the other part of our circular flow model. Uh, the government uses a percentage of consumer and producer income uh, taxes to provide services like hospitals, police, public transport to improve our lives. So that's trying to, again, show you the connection between economics and our health and happiness. So how do we measure a quality of life? We know economics relates to uh, our health and happiness, but how do we measure it? How do you just say, yeah, I'm happy, or yeah, I've got a good life? Not really how it works. Um, so what impacts your health and happiness, and how do we measure it? That's what we're looking at today. So, the term living standards uh, describes your level of income, so how much money uh, you have coming in, as well as the general living conditions in a society that influence the quality of life experience. So basically it's your income, so your ability to buy goods and services that help you meet your needs and wants, and then it's the other stuff that you don't really control. It's your general kind of life uh, outside of your income. So it's, you know, the environment, it's the city you live in, it's pollution, etc. Uh, so the standards of living in a region, a city, a nation can be divided into two categories. So as I mentioned earlier, you can have material living standards. So if it's a material thing, it's something you can hold in your hand, it's physical. Uh, so material living standards refer to basically your income, your money that's coming in so that you can buy materials. So it's your income available for meeting needs and wants. So the money you have available to purchase uh, food, shelter, clothing, etc. So that's your material living standards. So your life will be impacted by how much money you have and how much money you can use to purchase food, water, etc. So that's your material living standards. The other stuff though, the non-material living standards, relate to your general living conditions impacting human life. So again, you've got your material stuff that you can hold in your hand. You can't really hold the crime rate in your hand, but it's going to impact your quality of life. If you live in a city where there's a lot of crime, or if there's a lot of pollution, or there's no access to education or healthcare, that's going to impact uh, your standards of living, your quality of life. So you've got material and non-material living standards there. So material, physical, non-material, just the general broader picture stuff at your window. So, we know how to uh, classify our living standards. How do we measure it? How do I say, you know, looking at all this stuff, I have a very good quality of life or I have a very poor quality of life? If we can measure our quality of life, we can improve it. That's the reason why we are trying to measure it. <laughs> if, for example, if the government identifies that our state has low access to education, then they can use tax dollars to create new and improved schools. So that's why it's important to be able to measure our living standards, or measure our quality of life, because we can't fix a problem until we know that that problem exists. There are a number of tools and indicators that we can use to measure living standards. We'll be focusing on these three here. Uh, so GDP, which you might have heard before in economics last year, or maybe in small business if you're doing that elective. Uh, GDP is the gross domestic product. And that's the total value of goods and services produced in a national economy in one year, 
reflecting how the national economy is performing overall. So if you're thinking, what the hell does GDP mean? What did Mr. Tapley just say? <laughs> Basically, GDP is how much money the country makes. So how much money Australia makes. The Australian GDP is X amount of dollars. The American GDP is the total value of all the goods and services being sold, how much money they've generated in one year. So GDP, think country. Think how much money does Australia have. GDP per capita, total value of goods and services, so it's how much money that a person has. So it's your GDP of Australia divided by the total population. So that's reflecting the income of an average citizen. So GDP, think how much money does Australia make. GDP per capita, think per person. So GDP per average person in Australia. So if the GDP of Australia is $1 billion or something like that, the GDP per capita would be $1 billion divided by how many people live in Australia. So the average income of a uh, per capita person in Australia might be like $50,000 a year. Okay? Last one is HDI. We love our acronyms in economics. <laughs> so HDI stands for Human Development Index. And that measures things. You'll notice that these first two very much focused on the money, very much focused on you know our material living standards, our income. But that's not really the only thing that impacts your life. You can have a lot of money, but if there's no hospitals and no schools in your uh, city or your nation, you're going to have a very low quality of life. So how do we measure all those non-material ones? Well, HDI, the Human Development Index, measures living standards by assessing not just your income, it assesses life expectancy, so how long are you expected to live for, which is obviously going to be a reflection of your health, how much access to food and water you have, you know, do you have medicine, do you have hospitals? It uh, measures your education, so your access to education, and it measures your income, so it reflects all the living standards, not just dollars. So that's why some people prefer to use HDI when they're measuring living standards of a country. So, our lesson activities. Three questions. Uh, complete the following questions in your digital workbook. Question one. Identify the following as either material or non-material living standards. So you'll just be writing these three down, or typing these three down in your workbook. So average income. Is that a material living standard? So remember our definition of material and non-material living standards over here. Average income, is that material? Access to water, the quality of water that you have, is that going to be material or non-material? And then your literacy rate, so the amount of people in that city or country that can read and write, so the education they've received in the English language, so whatever language they're in. <laughs> so material or non-material, you just have to tick the boxes for those three there, that's question one. Question two. Explain how the COVID-19, the coronavirus, outbreak and restrictions could impact living standards in Australia. Again, no wrong answers there. There's probably a lot of right answers for this question. I just want you guys for question two to be thinking in general, uh, what impact on our quality of life, on our living standards, has the coronavirus had? So think back to, well, what impacts my quality of life? All of these things relate to you know the quality of life that I have. Has coronavirus impacted these things? Has coronavirus impacted... Uh, the amount of money that some people have. People have been put out of jobs. Has coronavirus impacted the health of our city or country? Absolutely. So think, of that, uh, think about those things. Question three, final question. Um, so another term that you guys should have seen in your seven uh, geography, not economics, but in economics, another term related to living standards is livability. Read this article to explain the factors and measurements used to define livability. So I've worded this one kind of poorly, but question three, really what I'm after is the definition of the word livability and how we measure it. And if you click on this article here, which I should have open already, you don't actually have to read through the entire article, but it lists the uh, top 10 uh, most like livable cities in the world for 2019. You can see Mrs. Hapley's, oh, I've got an ad there, super. <laughs> you can see Adelaide's in there. Denmark, Copenhagen, Tokyo. Anyway, but that's not what I'm after. You'll see that these cities are being ranked out of different uh, categories, and those categories are uh, what they use to measure livability in this survey, in this uh, test, I suppose. So question three is asking, 
Oops, that's your turn. Sorry, guys. Spoilers. <laughs> question three is asking, um, how do we measure livability? How do we define livability? So three questions for this period here. Um, you don't have to read the entire article again. You're just looking for those four or five key measurements that they use for livability. Uh, and if you have any questions about the slides, about uh, the content, please let me know. Otherwise, best of luck, guys. And uh, cheers.